So welcome to our presentation about Gen Z. I'm Kamala Gerard. My partner was Michelle Miller. So first of all, we want to talk about who is Generation Z. Well, oftentimes when we talk about particular generations, we talk about years in which those people were born. Um, behaviorists tell us, however, that generation affiliation has more to do with your way of thinking and behaving than it does necessarily to do with the dates in which you were born. So Generation Z, oops, to go back, so Generation Z you can see at the bottom. Typically, if we are to put them in a chronology, Generation Z um, are the people that were born between 1995 and the present. They're, they, they are the most recent generation. Sometimes they're called the I generation or centennials. Um, sometimes the 9-11s because these are people who've never known anything different than the high security world and the cautious sort of dangerous uh, terrorism alert world that we live in post 9-11. These have all have impacts on the behavior of who Generation Z is. So one of the characteristics of Generation Z, which is pretty interesting, is that of all of the generations that preceded them, Generation Z is the most ethnically diverse. So they say that one of the things that will be a differentiator for people in Generation Z is that instead of noticing um, diversity, they'll notice lack of diversity. So kind of an interesting phenomenon. Another thing that um, you'll hear if you listen to the TED Talk that we have linked as one of our resources is that a 15-year-old in the United States has more in common with a 15-year-old in India than she does with a 65-year-old in her own country. So just kind of a shift of, of how uh, globalization and just ways of thinking um, are shifting in, in ways that other generations before them have not. So Generation Y is the generation that is generally considered to precede Generation Z. Um, you can see from this list some of the things that characterize Generation Y. Generation Z is a little bit different. For one, they say up to 11% of them will have ADHD, as we now clinically define what that is. Um, notice that Generation Z also notes that they will be school hackers. This is kind of an interesting phenomenon that's a characteristic of Generation Z. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a later slide. Um, but this is a generation who doesn't take for granted that their teachers have all of the information or that the teachers are delivering information that's necessarily relevant to their lives. As you might imagine, this can be a big challenge to teachers in the classroom. So what do they share in common with Generation Z? These are the kids that Generation Z is widely considered the kids that we're seeing now. They do have quite a lot in common. Um, for one thing, there is the perception that the job they land in might not necessarily, will likely not be the job that they stay in. This is really different from earlier generations that uh, planned on landing good jobs and then staying in them for a lifetime with very little change. Um, note that both Generation Z and Generation Y tend to be skeptical of companies. You can imagine if you're a business that this could be a real challenge for marketing. Um, one of the other interesting things that I heard about Generation Y is that they will be more responsible for businesses closing than any other generation before them. And that's just because they'll be shifting the paradigm of what's needed and how services are delivered. So take, for example, some of the thinking about how Amazon could start delivering groceries. Um, so what if grocery stores became uh, a relic of the past? Kind of interesting. Both Generation Z and Generation Y uh, talk about wanting to make positive change in the world, fortunate for all of us. 60% um, of I generation, note that that's another name for Generation um, Z again, want to have an impact on the world. 84% um, of millennials say that making a difference in the world is even more important than professional recognition. So you'll see a rise in nonprofits and um, general involvement in sort of social good and social justice perhaps as a characteristic of these two generations. A part of both of these generations, uh, big picture has been technology, obviously. Um, so you can see that technology is not only ubiquitous, but a, a world without technology is just something that, um, that a, a lot in these later generations can't even conceive of. So imagine, um, if you could, that uh, this, the concept of a dial tone on a telephone could be something of a relic of a past. 
um, or the idea that you couldn't video Skype with somebody or video conference with somebody um, or just text with somebody um, or just maybe even share an emoji or an icon to communicate something that you want to say. Um, those are all things that we're going to sort of see as these later generations um, emerge. So what does this mean as educators? What are the changing demands of the general of the Generation Z student? Um, they're going to want a more customized experience. They're going to want to know that what you're teaching them in the classroom has relevance to the real world. Um, they won't take for granted that you're necessarily the expert. You probably see some of this if you have kids who have technology. Um, kids are often fact-checking us already in the classroom. You'll see a lot more distrust of that sage on the stage model, um, a lot more hunger for collaboration and working together, um, and connecting with people around the world. Note also a really interesting trend that there are beginning to be generations of people, they're beginning to be uh, students graduating from high school who are questioning the value of college. And this is not your typical student who maybe didn't identify themselves as kind of college ready or college bound, but um, students who are strong students are beginning to question if an internship might be better suited for developing their talents than sitting in a classroom and hearing from a professor. So interesting paradigm shifts in the role in education for Generation Z. Um, so note also that, and, and this is kind of an interesting paradigm shift as well, that 47% of Generation Z consider that maybe joining the workforce might be a better course of action than going on to college. Kind of interesting. All right, so finally, what do we need to know about Generation Z? This uh, is a generation that will demand change in education. Uh, businesses are going to have to respond uh, in pretty compelling ways to ch changing expectations and changing models of how people um, get services delivered and products delivered from various companies. Um, workplace workflow is going to change. You already see a lot of shift in people working from home, getting education anywhere, uh, anytime, sort of learning through online education. Um, things are definitely on the move when we talk about Generation Z. So that's a short summary. Please go into our page and take a look at some of the resources we have linked and participate in the discussion about Generation Z. Uh, both Michelle and I are looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thanks so much.